The following is a production of New Mexico State University. In the Southwest, salsa is a long-standing tradition and a necessary part of every meal. Its popularity is a phenomenon. These days, salsa outsells ketchup all over the world. Chances are you're selling more salsa yourself. People love salsa and its popularity has created a boom for small producers with their own family recipe. With this increased production and sales comes increased risk. Many producers don't process salsa correctly, causing foodborne illness or death from contaminating microorganisms. In addition, it could mean lawsuits and a bad reputation for the processor. So why take a chance? It's a good business to process your salsa correctly. Most microorganisms that contaminate food, Clostridium botulinum, Escherichia coli, Salmonella, Listeria, and various molds are commonly found in the ground and air and only need a favorable environment to grow. However, microorganisms can be killed by applying heat and their growth is inhibited by adding acid to your ingredients. The steps in making salsa are similar whether you're a small, medium, or large processor. You all begin with the raw ingredients for salsa and a location and equipment for processing. The most important factors at every step are sanitation, temperature, and time. If you pay attention to each of these, your chances of contamination will be minimal. We'll examine each as we go along. Then we'll help you identify problems unique to your own procedure. The cleanliness of your workplace is critical. During processing, make frequent checks for possible contamination. Everything you use to make salsa needs to be clean. Check your water supply. Do you use a well or city water? And is it free of chemical and microbial contamination? If you don't know, call your county extension agent for information about testing it. Everyone who handles food must remove rings, watches, and all other jewelry, tie their hair back, and wear proper hairnets. Wash your hands frequently and always after using the restroom. Scrub with soap for a full 20 seconds. If you have a cut, cover it with a clean bandage and protect it from moisture. A worker with an open wound must not work near the food. If necessary, assign other duties within the plant. If you or an employee has a contagious illness like a cold or the flu, don't come to work. Use a three-sink method for washing your equipment, utensils, and work area with soap, clean water rinse, and a sanitizing agent. A solution of one tablespoon chlorine bleach for each gallon of water is an excellent sanitizer and is very inexpensive. Use hot water for washing and rinsing, then drain utensils thoroughly. The containers and lids you use probably come to you in cartons. Wash and sanitize them to remove bits of cardboard fiber and possible contaminants. Most jars are designed to be used only once. A second time weakens the glass and could cause breakage. Check each jar to make sure it's not broken or chipped. Never use a lid more than once. Check each new one to make sure the sealing material is intact. When using fresh food in your salsa, rinse it well paying close attention to foods that grow close to the ground, like onions or cilantro. The earth is a natural environment for contaminating microbes, so make sure the dirt is washed off. Make sure canned food is safe before using it. Here are some things to look for. Is the label outdated, or is the can old and rusty? Are the ends bulging? Is it dented? Does the odor or appearance of the food indicate deterioration? If the answer is yes to any of these, don't use it. Return it or throw it away. Now that the workplace is clean, let's make salsa. As you go along, remember to wash and rinse your spoons and utensils each time you use them. In the cooking process, high temperature and an acidic environment will kill contaminating microbes or keep them from growing. If you're going to sell your product to the public, you must invest in two important pieces of equipment accurate thermometers, and pH meters. Proper testing is the only way you'll know for sure that your product is safe. If 
consult a professional in food science to determine the adequate process for your product. Follow these specifications and maintain the necessary times and temperatures unique to your process. After you've mixed your other ingredients, add the acidifying agent. Vinegar, citric acid, and lemon juice are the most common. Mix the salsa well, remove a sample, let it cool, and test the pH. You're going for 4.2 or less. The botulism toxin is a deadly poison, so don't even think about compromising your pH. Discard each sample you test. Continue to add acid, mix well, and test the pH until you get there. After your salsa has cooked for the required time, remove a sample, let it cool, and test the pH one more time. Under 4.2, great. After you become more familiar with the quantity of acid needed for your product, these few steps will be fast and simple. As a reminder, is everything still clean? Hands, spoons, containers? Good, let's continue. Now it's time to fill the jar. It's important that the salsa remain hot throughout the entire filling process. Make sure you maintain this high temperature by testing a sample at the beginning, midway, and at the end of the filling process. Remember, use a clean utensil each time and don't return it to the batch. There are various ways to fill jars. Whatever your method, be neat and swift. Working quickly means that your salsa stays hot throughout the process. If salsa spills over the lip of the jar, wipe it with a clean, sanitized cloth. Food particles on the jar can prevent a secure seal and provide a place where air and microbes can creep back into the salsa. Put the lid on quickly and tighten securely. Turn the jar upside down for three minutes. The heat from the salsa further sanitizes the lid and melts the sealant to form a secure seal. But don't leave it upside down. This will prevent a vacuum from forming under the lid. A good vacuum means no air and good preservation of your product. After the jars are completely cooled, check the lid. A dip indicates a strong vacuum. Press on it. It shouldn't pop up. Check the jar, too. See any cracks or chips? After the jars have cooled completely, select a few jars of salsa at random and check the pH. Is it at or below 4.2? Check every batch of product you make. While labeling, handle the jar gently. Your labels need specific information. The name and that it is salsa. The address of the manufacturer. Contents by weight and a list of ingredients in order of prominence. As the manufacturer, you are responsible for your salsa. If the salsa is contaminated, you are liable. But sometimes contamination comes from consumer abuse. Maybe the salsa was old when opened, the vacuum seal was broken before purchase, the consumer didn't refrigerate the salsa after opening, or they left the lid off. We suggest instructions on your label to help educate the consumer and help ensure the integrity of your product. Now let's review and consider problems you might encounter. Make sure all gas, electric, and plumbing fixtures are working properly. If you don't know, call your utilities companies. Most of them will do safety checks free of charge. Always use soap when washing and always use a sanitizing agent. Invest in good equipment that works properly. Sometimes a small budget might tempt you to cut corners don't do it. Look ahead to the future. Any investment you make now will pay you back many times over in a quality product. Be aware of safety hazards. Never rub your eyes or skin when handling chilies or onions, and wear gloves if your skin is sensitive to irritation. Avoid repeated motions like tightening jar lids with the same hand. This can cause joint and muscle pain and may lead to more severe injury. Vary your movements frequently. Move around rather than standing in one place for long periods. If you must stand in one place, use a rubber mat to reduce foot and leg fatigue. Elevate your feet during rest periods. Wear a safety belt when lifting heavy boxes to prevent back strain. Again, vary your movements frequently and maintain good posture to reduce muscle strain. Keep a first aid kit in your workplace and refer to a first aid manual for other first aid methods. If you or a worker has an open wound or an illness, stay away from the food and the processing line. Design a program unique to your product and location with your food technologist. 
identify critical contamination points. Review this process frequently. If you don't understand any step of the process, ask the food technology specialist at New Mexico State University. Keep notes about your procedures nearby for quick reference. Here's a problem you may encounter. What if you check your pH at the end of the day and it isn't low enough? After all that work and considerable expense, are you going to throw out an entire batch of salsa? No, you don't have to throw it out, but you have to correct the problem and there are ways to do that. Design a backup plan with your food technologist for these situations. Everyone loves salsa and sales are up. If you want to have a quality product and maintain your good reputation, process your salsa safely from beginning to end. Remember, doing it the right way is good business. The preceding was a production of New Mexico State University. The views and opinions in this program are those of the author and do not necessarily represent the views and opinions of the NMSU Board of Regents.